Today we're going to be um, making predictions based on theoretical probability. We're also going to be taking a look at some experiments, some experimental probability and um, survey results to make predictions from those. So looking at this spinner, you can see that it is subdivided. It has yellow, blue, red, blue, and green. And we want to know what is the theoretical probability of spinning a yellow. So we can, you know, kind of look at how it's divided. And we see that yellow represents one-fourth of the spinner. So the theoretical probability is that we would land on yellow one out of four times. Use this information to see if you would spin the spinner a hundred times how many times you expect to get yellow? Well, basically, one-fourth of a hundred. So you could do a couple different things. We can change a fourth to a percentage, which is 25%, and 25% of a hundred is 25. You could just look simply at what probability means, and it's the number of favorable outcomes, which is one out of four times of spinning. So if we spin a hundred times, we know that um, we had to multiply 1 and 4 by 25 to get that 25 out of 100 times. What about spinning red? It's divided a little bit differently because red represents a smaller than one-fourth section. It's actually half of a fourth or one-eighth. So you would expect to get red one out of eight times. So using this information, how many times would you expect to get red out of a thousand times? Again, one-eighth of a thousand. And if you change it to a decimal, you see that it is 125 thousandths. So 125 times you would expect red out of a thousand times of spinning. How, what is the theoretical probability of spinning a blue? Well, now we have to look at all the sections that are blue. And so we have one-fourth is blue, which represents two-eighths, and another eighth. So altogether, we have three out of eight probability of getting blue. So using this information, how many times would you expect to get blue if you spun the spinner? 800 times. So we can change, um, look at the probability, 3 out of 8 is equal to what out of 800? So since we would multiply 8 by 100, we would multiply 3 by 100 as well. And we would expect to land on blue 300 times if we spin the spinner 800 times. <clears throat> if you roll a number cube 600 times, about how many times do you expect to roll a 3 or a 6? Well, first we have to calculate the probability of rolling a 3 or a 6. Probability of rolling a 3 is 1 out of 6. Probability of rolling oops, a 6 is also 1 out of 6. So since we expect to roll a 3 or a 6 2 out of 6 times, we use that information, we can set up a proportion and say 2 out of 6 is equal to what out of 600, okay? The other thing you can do is you could change it to a uh, decimal, but when it's one-third, it's going to be a repeating decimal, so that might be kind of hard to do. So in this case, remember, when we're solving proportions, we're going to make an equation that says, um, since cross products are equal, 6x is equal to... 1200, we can divide both sides by 6 and find that we would expect to roll a 3 or a 6 200 times. If we look at this table, the student council at a new junior high surveyed five students for each of the 10 homerooms to determine what mascots students would prefer. The results are in the table. If there's 375 students in the school, predict how many students prefer the tiger as the mascot. So first, we need the theoretical probability or experimental probability from this table. So you have to add up and get the total here, but they did tell us that there were five students from 10 homerooms, so we could say that that sounds reasonable, but adding up the number, it equates to out of 50. Since there are 28 out of 50 that prefer the tiger, 
how many out of 375? So in this case, we would take um, and solve the proportion, right? You take 28 times 375, divide by 50. We find that x is equal to um, 210. So about 210 students prefer the tiger. Another way to do it is to change 28 over 50 into a percentage. This represents 56%. So if we take 56% of the 375, so 56% of 375, remembering that in math, of means to multiply, change this to a decimal and multiply, you will also get your um, 210 and you can try it both ways to make sure that you understand that. So the 28 out of 50 represents 56% of the student body. If 56% of the student body prefer the tiger, then 56% of the 375 students can be predicted as well to prefer the tiger. And that's how we would use our survey results to make predictions. And our final example. Keith found that 20 out of 50 students in the lunch line liked the enchiladas best. Best. There are 520 students in his middle school. How many students would like enchiladas based on this information? So we have a couple different things. We can change um, the 20 out of 50 to a reduced fraction, to a percent, and we could calculate how many per what percent is of 520. We could also take our fraction, the 20 out of 50, and say that's equal to what over 520. So two different ways to solve this problem to get a total of 208 students that would prefer enchiladas.